Hello, everybody. This is uh, Jacob Sapochnik, EnchantingLawyer.com. Welcome to our podcast. This is a show where we interview the most inspiring entrepreneurs and professionals from all over the world who share their stories with us and, of course, inspire us to be better at what we do. Today, we have a very, very exciting guest all over from all the way from England, from London. His name is Ravi Shukal. And Ravi is a, is a social media expert. He's um, uh, one of the top U- UK's... Um, um, consultants when it comes to um, using online to build uh, better relationships, build communities, tell better stories, and just engage your your audience so eventually they can convert to become uh, better clients. Ravi, I'm very honored and excited to have you on the show. Welcome. Great to be here, Jacob. Uh, I know we've connected online a few times, so it's nice to have this chance to talk one-to-one and um, dive in a bit deeper. How's how's everything in London? Everything is cold in London. Um, it's getting dark earlier here. The weather is really cold, so I think everyone's kind of preparing themselves for uh, winter down here. So it's a kind of good time to kind of bog down and get all your stuff done before the new year. I think. Right. And here in the U.S., we're just before Thanksgiving, so it's a perfect time to get some, uh, uh, you know, great conversation with you. And I'm very excited to hear about some of the new things that are happening with you. But before we dive into the content, um, why don't you tell our audience about yourself and what you do? Sure. So um, I do social media management and strategy. And recently, at the time of the recording this podcast, I have I'm recently rebranding into more customer focused um, role. So what I'd be doing is helping business owners, entrepreneurs and business owners to develop a better relationship with their customers and their community. So as a result of building law customers, you develop a community around your business. They help spread the word of your business and eventually that can then lead to increased sales and longer lasting relationships. So that's something I'm going to be focusing on now moving forward. Um, It still encompasses social media and online marketing. So it's just about fusing the customer side of it for business owners with the online side and helping to create that law community for um, entrepreneurs and business owners. And how long have you been doing this? Uh, in the UK? Um, so I've been managing, I've been, so my original start was within, with marketing agencies. So uh, my first marketing agency, um, I was actually unaware of this, but when I went for the interview, they said, how, how would you like to manage, you know, the social media community? And then, you know, I was so hungry that I wanted the, wanted the role because I enjoyed social. I was like, yeah, I can't wait to get in found out on the first day it was for Samsung throughout the whole of the UK. And um, literally what they did is they said, here's our login for YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, and go ahead and engage. They had zero strategy. They had nothing in place. Um, They didn't even know what a retweet was, the the marketing team there. It was crazy time. So um, the benefit was I got a chance to read everything about social media, put those practices into work, and I had huge flexibility to do what I wanted for such a big brand. So it was quite exciting to be part of that. And then um, after years of doing that, I eventually branched out on my own because I wanted to help more business owners with their social media as opposed to just one or two clients at an agency. And it's been about two years now where I've been doing it on my own and helping clients. So now that transition has gone into this community focus role um, is something that's been built up for the last few years. Excellent. And Ravi, I, I'm very happy that, um, uh, that you're here because, I, you know, learning things from a big brand like Samsung and just kind of transitioning it to what's happening today in, the, in, this, in this area is really important. So, you know, I talk in the podcast about social media. We talk about different things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I've known as somebody that's been using Facebook very effectively for my own business. And I'm yep. teaching other attorneys how to use social. But I want, I want you to tell us, first of all, what is a community? Before we dive in into the importance of building one, what is a community sure. online? So an online community is a group of people who share the same passion or idea as the brand or company itself. So customers 
aren't a community on their own. An actual community is a group of people who have that shared belief. So what, when we talk about building a community, it doesn't necessarily mean building more customers. It means building more people who share the values and ideas behind your business. So like, for example, Apple, it's not about having millions and millions of customers. It's the fact that their brand is known worldwide. They have the reputation and identity of a fashionable brand that's, you know, it's exciting. It's got, you know, there's, it's got that um, need attached to it where, you know, people feel like they need to have it. So that passionate community of people who enjoy the product is why they queue outside for hours upon hours. So, you know, you would call that a passionate community. The fact that you just, your business just has customers does not necessarily mean it's a community until they can get excited and share their, you know, the same ideas and vision as the company's putting across. Right. And so would you say that social media allows people to, uh, to basically gather, doesn't matter where they are geographically, into a community mm-hmm. and of, of shared ideas. Exactly. The, the, the best thing about social media is there's no uh, boundaries. It kind of lifts that floodgate because once upon a time, if you wanted to talk to someone from a different country, you had to either get a calling card or you'd have to call, you know, you know, across uh, to a different country, which would cost quite a lot of money. But thanks to the internet, you know, it, the internet does not shut down. It's 24-7. You have the ability to connect with people all around the world. And in the same way, a business owner or a company would have the potential to reach a worldwide audience, whereas maybe before the so- before social, they were mainly pushing out their messages through email. So it's a great way for them to build not only the to reach more customers, but I think they need to it's an ideal scenario for them to connect on a one-to-one basis with their customers and uh, fans. Right. And, and what do you think, Ravi, is one or two uh, points uh, to mention? Why is it so important to build uh, a community around your brand? So the most important part is, I mean, when you're online, the transparency needs to be there now. So customers are a lot more smarter nowadays. Uh, follow, you know, customers and followers. It, it's not the simple case of sending someone to an FAQs page or an email page. You know, customers now. I think there was a recent statistic saying that they um, they um, would like a response within at least an hour and a half of posting the original query. So they're expecting a faster response time. Now, the cost, the companies that do it well are the ones that can recognize this and aim to deliver that response, maybe not within the specific one hour time, but at least within the one or two, one to three hour time frame and have that interaction with them on social, which could then maybe take them over to their site. So I think having that Mm-hmm. one-to-one ability and just recognizing the fact that whether it's positive or negative it's still something that the company should pay attention to and definitely don't ignore any questions or don't you know brush anything aside i think it's important to be open if your business is unable to deal with a query or a problem rather than masking it underneath um in the, day, the day-to-day activities or other kind of updates around the company right and, you know, I, I think that in, in my case, I feel that, you know, building community has been really um, powerful because it, it, was, it was a great tool to, uh, uh, to build a loyal or a steady referral source where people call, you know, keep coming back and share ideas and eventually they'll come back and say, well, you know, maybe this attorney is good and we want to hire him. So that was a great, great way to, um, uh, to build a solid uh, kind of a referral um, uh, foundation for myself because we had a community that we, we, we could always nurture. Uh, exactly. Go ahead. Um, yep. And I wanted to ask you, Ravi, that in my case, uh, you know, the community, I, I saw the value of building it, but, but, mm-hmm. I, but, you know, I started doing it a couple of years ago and, you know, I, I and originally it was Facebook uh, and, and Twitter and we, people coming to Facebook and we were engaging, but I'm curious to know and, 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 li- and hear from you, how do you see that community building has changed over the past couple of years and what, what, what is ahead of us right now? <clears throat> so... I think there's a lot more interaction from brands um, compared to a few years ago. So social networks, maybe a couple of years ago when you started your Facebook and looked at it, there was kind of the three big players with, you know, Facebook, Twitter, and essentially Google+. Plus. Um, but now there's, you know, over 20, 30 different social networks, which all, you know, all the way from audio 
uh, specific ones to image like in uh, Instagram and Pinterest and then you have um, obviously you still have your Facebook but there's a lot more for businesses to kind of um, get involved with compared to the you know the kind of big key players that they that were predominantly used in the past so I think in terms of mm. businesses now who are looking to utilize that I think they need to do effective research to see what social networks work for them just because facebook is the biggest you know network in terms of users it does not necessarily mean it's the ideal place for you to reach out and build a audience so i think doing that research having the strat strategy before you launch on a social network is the best way for them to move forward now and it's one of the reasons why um, businesses have also had the opportunity to connect with customers in lots of different ways. So whether it's just through the photos, through Pinterest, whether it's through audio, through, you know, podcast shows, radio shows, or whether it's, you know, a mixture of the both, so video right. on networks like Instagram. So Ravi, the, the question I wanted to ask you now is, and, and a lot of my, my listeners are interested, in, and, I, and I've been talking about this before, mm -hmm. how, how, to, how to build a community? How to build a committed community? What are what you know? Most of my listeners are attorneys, professionals. If yes. somebody is listening right now, where do I yep. start building a committed community? The first thing you want to do when building a community is have the mindset of being transparent and authentic with your audience, because especially in in the legal industry. Um, the reason that they're going to invest in your services is because they trust you. And that's something mm -hmm. that's not easily achieved overnight. So having a social media platform is great. But if you really want to establish those referrals and grow your business in that sector, you will need to have the consistent content. So daily content going up that's helping to build that trust. And an easy way to get that trust out there is to be open with your fans mm -hmm. and audience. So um, don't be afraid to kind of project your views or your opinion on things. Obviously, we're not talking about um, kind of in a negative way, but <clears throat> your followers and community will be interested to know what your opinion is on leading topics, for example, especially with the legal side of things. There's always, there's always new cases and precedents that are getting set on a you know monthly, weekly, daily basis. So having that opportunity to take something that's for example current affairs like you mentioned the uh, obama right. immigration and then putting your spin on it to say how it will affect your clients is something that they want to know so i think put your opinion and personality across that way you come across more natural it builds more trust and also your fans or potential customers will know exactly what to expect when they do reach for that phone or email to contact you for business. That's a great point. And, you know, one of the things that I've been doing is, and, and, I, um, and I realized that two, two things are important, I think, in a community. First of all, bring uh, the, the leader's uh, unique point of view, the, whoever creates the community. It has to be different than, than everybody else's. And in the beginning, you know, I, I try to find that focal point for us, and, and I realized that for us it would be more of a, of a being more human, showing the, the, the back end, the back, back door of the, of the firm yes. and what we do. And so people, you know, see us as humans as, as opposed to just some other, uh, you know, attorney with a bookcase behind his picture. And mm -hmm. the other one was um, uh, uh, basically doing things that, um, that the people like. So we, we try different things. We, we, we like that people, they, they, they accept quotes and they want to they, they wanna get the daily yes. quotes. They like to see uh, um, um, something that is consistent. And, and I kept doing it and, 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 and it seemed to be they worked. So um, yeah, you know. that's a that's a that's a really good point because uh, you know just to add on to that. Yeah. Um, so if we take Facebook for example, they have new updates almost on a weekly basis. Um, having been in social media marketing for a few years, there's different advice at each stage. So at one stage it will be only text, then it will be only photos, then it might be more video. But the the actual answer to all these questions is there is no golden formula like if quotes work for your legal practice and facebook say that you know quotes don't do so well i would not just cut the quotes up just because you've read it somewhere online or you know you've seen an update that might affect it if it's something that's working for your business 
definitely continue to adopt that approach. So it, it's very sensible to have a look at what your community engage with, whether it's quotes, um, video or blog posts, and definitely keep posting more of that and testing out the number of times you share. So it, that's definitely good advice for um, people who are kind of figuring out what to post. Simply post a mixture of content, review what works, and then share more of that. It sounds very simple, but I think with you know, there's a lot. There's a lot of information out there online, especially in you know the online world and social media. So, but the simple fact is, concentrate on what works and just expand on that, rather than trying new strategies and being unsure if they're going to go anywhere. Exactly. And so, you know, we we, we understand now the value of community and more or less how to start. Uh, and, and and it's going to work differently for every every diff- every business. They, it's just a trial and yes. error. But the key mm-hmm. is to start. And, I, and, you know, one of the key things about a community, and I wanted to um, get your take on that, is our, we, we call them community heroes. We call them the advocates. Yes. And, and you know, we, I, I see them, I spot them um, throughout, uh, throughout the months. So people are co- keep commenting the same people, and we try to highlight them. We, try, we, we, we should never ignore them. But why don't you explain what, it, what, is it, what a community hero is and how do we elevate them and how do we find them? Sure. So a community hero is also like a brand advocate. And it's just going to be that person in your community that shows a higher level of interest compared to the rest of your fans. So when you're on your social channels, when you're looking through the comments, you will, 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 nine times out of ten, you will notice that the common names um, will come up. And they're the, these are the people that are excited to engage with your company they have a genuine opinion when you're sharing questions, etc. So they're a lot more involved than the average fan. So these are people you definitely want to capitalize on. Now, a few ideas is obviously to take them and essentially bring them on board with what your company is doing. So, you know, maybe if it's a legal practice and, um, you know, there might be some different um, rules about what you can kind of discuss and everything, but um, if they're happy to kind of contribute, it might be that you might use their opinion and feature it in a guest blog post, or it might be something where you highlight that fan. Maybe you make them the fan of the week, or maybe you kind of highlight their story and we you know how the legal help has helped them. So kind of what like a case study scenario. So having to identifying them is part one and then looking to involve them in your company's uh, vision is definitely part two to help bring them on board i mean another suggestion is it's quite it's quite out there but you could also if if they are constantly on your facebook page or any social channel then you could even look to kind of bring them on board as uh, an admin for those channels so they can become part of that content process. They can share their thoughts because you know they're already passionate. So in the community already responds well to them. So why not bring them on board and, you know, make them the, they don't have to be the face of your company, but they can still be someone that's you've, you've appreciated, recognized, and you've given them a role, which would obviously mean they're then going to be a customer for life. Right. You know, I think this is excellent advice. And, you know, I think in a legal uh, setup, what we've done is, uh, you know, we do have some fans that are um, um, constantly uh, commenting and we are rewarding them by uh, giving them um, uh, uh, good words and sometimes we send them things as a mm-hmm. thank you. But um, I, I try to get the people from the office to uh, be involved as well. So employees yes. of the, you know, especially in the legal field, I think it's important to get the, the employees involved. You know, they're the best advocates of any business. And if they are active on social, then they are able to be admins of the page, and sometimes they can answer questions. Sometimes they can they can alert if there's something negative, so we can immediately address it. So if you have the staff, even if you're one or two people at the office, I definitely think it's important to get them involved in building a community because the yes. community is as is an asset. Yes. Yeah, so your employees, they are your community because right. they have. Their brand identity is attached to your organization. So, for example, John, who works at Lawyer.com, when people ask him where he works, he's going to tell them. Now, the more passionate and excited you can get your staff about your organization, the bigger the word of mouth they will then go and spread and that positivity will, will you know spread across and then suddenly that your company will be something that people want to find out more about potentially even work for and building that rapport is very important i think 
um, those days have gone where companies leave it to the marketing department to handle social. I think all the employees should be trained up on the benefits of it, what to say, what not to say, but at the same time giving them some freedom um, to express themselves and you know just really get them involved in your company's future and vision. Right, excellent. And then Ravi, you know, we have a community and, and people are coming to the page, but there has to be content mm-hmm. on and, and you know, shared among the community. How, yeah. how, how do you think content and community uh, interact, or what is the connection? And maybe we can talk about some of the most uh, different types of content that we should be using in our community to create a community. Sure, I think so. There's obviously you have your text-based updates, you have photos, you have videos. So they're, they're the right. different types of medium that you can use for content. But when you're talking about content and a community, it's the content that triggers an emotional response, a content that they can relate to, and a content that they want to engage with. So the, the, the reason the quotes are good is because whatever message you shared is something that they agree with. They, it, you know, the, the sentiment in there, whether it's about leadership or whether it's something inspiring, is something that they feel that they can relate to. Now, content-wise, to help build a community, you want to be posting more kind of questions. So um, if it's a legal field, you want to get their opinion on maybe current affairs or current trends. Um, and with Facebook, they've actually said with one of their updates that they actually feel that they would rank current events higher in the newsfeed because they feel it's something more relevant for other users but not just for facebook if you're talking about current trends it's something that would help you get more coverage on twitter as well if you use relevant hashtags so looking at current trends asking their opinions on certain topics and um finding out their pain points because in a legal field the reason they come to ask for legal help is because there's an area that they're unsure about so why would they need the help in that area? You can expand on that, get the feedback, and then that would help to better shape your services and your messages. So um, definitely encourage more questions. Um, if you're talking about community, you're talking about trust, the easiest way to build that is to feature more um, kind of like the human approach, so to speak. So that is right. sharing the photos of your team, sharing photos of you as a business owner. If you can, fe- if you can, if you have the capacity to do video, then that's even better because that's a one-to-one medium where they're looking straight at you in the screen. Um, so anything where you can showcase yourself and the face behind the business is always going to be great. So combining that with questions would help give you a good idea of what your community wants and you know what they feel is valuable. To to them in terms of information then you can just go and find content that relates to that and share it across your channels right and my rule is that you know we we, we interplay between the content that builds trust content yes. that actually educates our audience uh we yeah. use uh, user generated content people you know stuff that they post and mm-hmm. then of course um we try to find um, uh, content that converts maybe it's something that uh, an offer that we'll do uh you know once in a while but the key is to me is is, is the content that, that trusts and educates and of course, the, um, uh, the the content that people want, which is the the quotes, and then you know between that, yes. uh, hopefully the community will kind of rise. Exactly. So I think you also want to have you don't want to be too strict. Like you want to be able to have some fun as well, because at right. the end of the day, no one works twenty four seven. So if if a, if a normal person has time after work where they enjoy some free time there's nothing wrong with the business showing a lighter side of things and i don't know it could be a christmas party it could be thanksgiving meal with employees yes. it could just be more a lighter mood to show that look we are we're not all work even though we're a legal practice because i think the, the, the that industry has got quite a corporate reputation so right. to bring that kind of you know lighter side to it will be definitely something that your fans will enjoy and open up to as well excellent Always, you know, it's not always about business. You have to be fun sometimes, and that's what people like. Exactly. Know, they want to be drawn to you in a way. Yep. So that's personality. So your business right. needs to have that. Can't be afraid to have a personality, and you know, in, you know, put that across. So it's not, yeah, it's not a hundred percent business. It's split between personality, that, and obviously those trust building types of content. Right. And, and Ravi, I wanted to ask you a, a very important uh, question about about storytelling. You know, we talked about building community. Mm-hmm. What do you think is, is, well, first, what is storytelling and what is the value of storytelling in marketing any business? So the word storytelling, it basically means to take your customers on that journey 
with you. So to tell your story means it usually has a you know a beginning, middle, and obviously there isn't an end in such because it's an ongoing practice. So when we talk about content and storytelling, it means you can describe your business but give the background. Um, at the same time when you're putting out your content. So if you are a legal practice or maybe you've, um, you know, you you have a case study you want to reference to, the storytelling side of things would be why you started up the practice, how you started it up, the idea behind it. So, you know, even something simple like your company name, your community would love to know how you came up with the name, the reason behind it. That way, you're telling the story. It might be something from childhood that you, you know, used as a brand name, but telling that story on how your company started and where you want to be headed for the future is something that would help build that community through the stories that your business tells. So it can be customers, it can be about your company, and it can even be featuring your employees. So if one of your employees has just passed a legal exam or something to celebrate, sharing that process with your you know, community and audience would be a great way to tell their story and also your company's. And again, it's it's all done for the purpose of humanizing yourself as, as a brand or as a business. So, you know, whether you're a service professional, we all have stories, you know, you know how we met, if, you know, how we had our first client, you know, what was so special about it or something that happened in the office and you kind of turn it into a story and you link it back to, to your message. Yeah, so when you have when you meet up with friends, your conversations, they're all stories. It's what you did on the weekend. That's technically a story. You're telling right. them how your day went. So with a business, you take that same concept apart from you're telling your customers the story. So, you know, if it's if it's something it doesn't even have to be something in the past. It could be the future. So your story could be, you know, we at this law firm believe that you know we want to take a stand on this kind of idea. So we're going to kind of introduce, you know, these actions or you know these principles that would help serve our clients better in this specific area so you know if you can help share your vision for the future it means your com- your customers and fans know what to expect and those that relate to that will be more than happy to you know follow and keep engaging because this is something that they also believe in so right. not just past but you know don't be afraid to share the future goals of the company as well and you know you can use storytelling to tell that and how you plan on you know, reaching there and the goals, and that's something that your customers and fans can enjoy. And what are some of the tools that you think are, are useful to, to be for us to use as we tell better stories? Um, on social media, mm-hmm. um, so video mm-hmm. as a platform is um, going to be one of the ideal ways you can tell your story because visual, you have the visual element to it and you have the audio element to it. So you, the visual element helps trigger, you know, that trusted emotion if you're featuring your, you know, either the owner or its employees. And then the audio helps to build emotion because you can, depending on the type of, um, you know, you could have the type of music or the type of theme you go with the video. It can either be used to inspire you know, encourage them or, you know, motivate them. It just depends on the context. Um, Another thing would be, um, although, for example, a lot of people in online marketing feel that longer updates, um, you know, might not necessarily be a good thing. There's there's posts about 80 characters. I mean, the truth is, if you're going to be telling your story, your audience will not care how long your update is. It, it It could be 400 words, but... If you've kept it to the, if there's a reason for them to keep reading through the whole post, which is the whole point of you telling the story, that is still going to get shared if the same or even more than a shorter update, which just says, you know, click here to see our view of the future. So um, there is a page that Humans of New York, that whole business was the concept is storytelling. They, he finds someone in New York, mm-hmm. asks them to share their story. He literally pastes the summary of the story which is usually paragraphs and it gets thousands of us i think the the highest post they have is um about four million likes and i think it has something like over a hundred thousand shares um and it's just the power of telling the story um is able to connect a lot of people the reason they're hitting that share button is because they relate to it and they want to tell their friends about what they've just read so do not be restricted by the content length when you're sharing your stories. In fact, I would encourage longer updates when you're explaining something and describing something that your business is doing. 
right? <clears throat> and this page is a great example because it, it, it just, the story draws you into the page and you're just inclined to share it because it's so interesting. You know, the, the photo and the story, you always, yes. you know, people who follow the page, they always want to know what's going to be the next, you know, what's going to be the next story. And, um, and it's, it's become, it has become a community because people sh in the comments, they, they, yep. they basically tell, they, they talk and they say, well, you know, if, you know, if it's somebody who's good looking, they'll make some comments. If it's somebody yeah. who looks sad, it's just, uh, it's, it's amazing. And I, I don't, I, I've seen him speak, um, at an event and it was just, um, um, the story of, of this page is, is just phenomenal because we all, uh, crave for story, for, for stories. Which exactly. So, I mean, in because your your show is aimed, obviously, if you're looking at the legal side of things, right. if you you know, if someone's having a problem, it depends on what type of law you're specializing in. But for example, if it was if it was either some property law, for example, and you know, you've just you know help them resolve a situation which has meant that they can stay in the house for an extra 6 months the story behind it you know the journey that they've gone through everyone has a you know reason why they would you know need that help so like bringing that um you know bringing those stories up front means not only would someone just read it but they relate to it and they've also got an opinion on it so humans of new york will see someone that's maybe i don't know living off uh i don't know 20 bucks a week or something and they're maybe going through a difficult time there'll be others who've gone through that exact same process which will comment and say that happened to me this is what i did and it really helped and that's how you build the community through that shared interest so sharing stories means it allows other people to relate to what you're doing which is the key thing as well right excellent ravi and of course, you know, having you on the show, Ravi, I'm not going to let you go before we talk about Facebook and some of the most yes. um, important changes that happened in the past uh, few months. Why don't you run mm -hmm. through some of the key ones that you think will be uh, um, helpful for us to know and, um, and tell us what we can do with those changes? Sure. So there's been, there's been a lot of changes in the last couple of months. Um, Facebook ads have, has been a platform which is uh, changing continuously with more deeper rooted targeting. So what Facebook have said recently within the last few weeks is if your messages are overly promotional, then Facebook is going to take this into consideration and you've then got less likelihood of your ads being approved or even being seen um, in the news feed. So what they're actually after is more genuine content. So there's two ways to look at that situation because if you're a charity and you're asking for donations for a particular cause, you know, Facebook might flag that and say, oh, this person's always asking for, you know, money or donations. So mm -hmm. I think the goal here in terms of Facebook's point of view is they're just trying to encourage more genuine and original content. So um, other updates we mentioned were also current trends. So on the right hand side of your Facebook homepage, you have the trending topics. So similar to Twitter. So Facebook have kind of said that if you can um, use content that's currently trending or something that's relevant now, that's something that they feel is more valuable to users and that will rank your content higher in the feed. So having that kind of real real time element to your content as well is something you should definitely consider but i wouldn't obsess about it totally so with all these changes um i would kind of look at them as suggestions and not the complete rule so with your facebook ads you definitely want to be you know more wary with the wording and making sure that you aren't coming across salesy so it's not just hey click to get my free legal report and you know you know you straight away they're entered into some um, opt-in page. You have to be a bit more, um, you know, open and there has to be a bit more a reason to why you're sharing the content other than just to get a click. So there's that side of stuff with ads. Uh, with the content side, Facebook have actually made some good improvements to their video. Mm -hmm. So if you have, even if you have a testimonial for your firm or company, literally after the video is finished playing, Facebook has a call to action button at the end, and this allows you to put a link, any link of your choosing, at the end of your clips. So once someone's finished playing a 30-second clip, for example, it will pop up and you can choose a call to action button. It might be read more, find out more. There's various options on there. And then it then allows you to add a link. So when someone clicks that, it can you can either take them to your website, you can take them to another Facebook page, or you can take them to another resource to find out more. So video content is something that 
um, appears to get a lot more reach and coverage on Facebook. So we mentioned video is a good way to build trust um, on Facebook. It's mm-hmm. going to also be a great way to build coverage and awareness for what you're doing. So definitely experiment. It doesn't need to be five minute videos, but if you've only got 30 seconds to a minute to get a point across or to share even, uh, you know, you can even use it to see if you can just share a point or even a quote or anything, um, definitely look to involve video in your content strategy. So you you don't need a high-end studio to Mm -hmm. create video. You've got a smartphone. There's always potential for companies to use video in their marketing to help. Um, increase that awareness so you find that video that is posted straight directly to the page without a link to youtube is is getting more engagement these days Mm. so in a simple way of putting it facebook prefers their own uh platform which sounds very obvious but um there was a recent study carried out there's another marketer called pat flynn who does podcasting Mm-hmm. Um, and what he did is he done a side by side comparison of Facebook video and YouTube video. Now he has about I think eighty five thousand Facebook fans and thirty five thousand YouTube fans. It's going to be different for every business, but the findings of that research showed that when he used a YouTube link, he got about maybe ten, maybe a few thousand views over the seventy two hour period. When he compared that to Facebook video, when he just put a two minute trailer. He was able to get thousands of likes and about 20, 30 shares. So the initial impact is higher by up- uploading directly than it is to share a you know, YouTube link to your channel. Because your goal with YouTube is to get subscribers. Mm-hmm. And the goal of subscribers is to interact more with your videos. But if you can achieve that directly through Facebook, um, then it's something you definitely should test out. Excellent. Those are great tips. And Ravi, as we come to the end of our show, why don't you give us a couple of tips as we um, are coming close to 2015? What are going to be mm-hmm. the, some of the key things that we should be doing as business owners to build our communities, build our engagement, just become more successful in social? The first thing I would say is with a content plan, you do not need to be very strict with it. It doesn't need to be something where you're three posts a day, Monday to Sunday for the next month. I think have space in your 2015 calendar for current events, for things happening with your business. It might be highlighting your thoughts on a particular topic or with your employees. So be flexible with your content strategy moving into 2015. Um, If you have stuck to one particular type of content, I would say the new year is a great opportunity to maybe experiment with other types. So if you've mainly been doing blogging, look to introduce maybe SlideShare, which is like a slideshow uh, social network. Maybe look to utilize video that we talked about. Um, so have a, and even if you haven't tried audio, you could look at things like SoundCloud and podcasting. So 2015 is a year to vary your content. I think content distribution means as a business owner, you don't have to create so much different type of content the best way to do it would be to create one solid good piece of content distribute it in the different formats for each social network and you'll also get more reach and coverage that way so distribute your content a lot further leave space for real-time events and obviously look to have more interaction face-to-face with either video answering questions and to help build that human element so put your opinion across as well excellent <clears throat> thank you so much Ravi and for our audience who would like to uh, find your, your new website and uh, you're, you're launching a new podcast why don't you tell us the name of the podcast and also where we can find you online sure so the actual our interview today is actually perfect around community because my podcast is actually called Crown Your Community so you can uh, yes. and you can find my website at ravishukal.com so R-A-V-I S-H-U-K-L-E dot com. And um, on the subject of community, the the podcast show just focuses on interviewing business owners and entrepreneurs and looks at the kind of successes and challenges they faced in growing more loyal customers and some advice that business owners can use to do the same to help grow more passionate audience. Excellent. We're going to link in our show notes uh, your website and your, your, your future podcasts and any, any other links that we talked about uh, in this show. Thank you so much, Ravi, um, all the way from London, and I wish you a great uh, beginning of the week and um, for coming on our show. Thanks for having me, Jacob. It's been great to be part of the show. Of course. 
And thank you, our listeners. This is Jacob at EnchantingLawyer.com. If you have any questions or comments about the show, please email me or you leave a comment at the show, at the show blog, www.enchantingLawyer.com. And we'll see you in our next episode.